I'll be honest with you, I hate to be a, I mean, kind of like this is a huge disaster that that the extent of this is so much further than what we're, that what we're being told. Is this tough work you're getting, doing here? Have you been told not to talk to the media by BP? Uh. Is the operation going well out here, do you think? No comment. We went to the top man on the site, an employee of a company called ES&H, an environmental services company contracted by BP. Sir, is there any reason why your workers can't talk to us? You're in charge out here. Is there any reason why people are being told they can't talk to us? Is it BP saying you can't talk? BP supports anyone's right to talk to journalists, and he went on, and I'm quoting here, BP has not and will not prevent anyone working in the cleanup operation from sharing his or her own experiences or opinions. What are your sources telling you? That the leak is, or the flow of oil coming out of the ground is much, much larger and not controllable. They cannot stop it, and they will not be able to stop it for at least another year. Another year? Yes. That oil will eventually make its way up the East Coast, across the Atlantic, and coat the beaches in Europe, I believe. Griff, this is, this is probably, uh, I'm not saying probably, this is, if this is real, really true, this has to be, in our lifetime, the biggest ecological disaster we have ever seen. On the face of the earth, yes. Uh, recently, Obama said a curious thing on camera, and it was on the internet. He said he was sending SWAT teams from the Department of the Interior down to those platforms. One of the past officials of Interior said he didn't know that they had SWAT teams. They required all of the platform owners just in the last week or so to refile all of the papers, their papers, for permits. That means that all of those workers on those drilling platforms are not getting paid. And the platforms, some of them going at half a million dollars a day payments to banks and finance companies, uh, are not allowed to work to make money to pay the interest or the payments on their platforms. For every worker on those platforms that they shut down, there's 4.7 workers on the shore that depend on that income. So you multiply all of the people that are idle now by decree, and uh, you have a sizable number, thousands and thousands of people, in addition to the money lost on the oil and the platforms and the banks and the, the financing and all of that. So there's an awful lot going on down there. I'm not surprised to see the security. I think it's... Uh, uh, a catastrophe of the first magnitude in, in the making right now, and I think it's going to affect the United States. It could be very well the demise of the United States as we know it, uh, Mel. <sighs> and let's just once again be clear, just like I said last night, our intention is not to spread fear, but to try to inform you. Because if you turn on your TV and you put the, the regular channels, Fox, CNN, CBS, ABC, all you're going to get is minimal. But if we're seeing that, that these, these people, Goldman Sachs, the CEO of BP, sold these shares, it's, it's, they must have known that something was coming. The question in everybody's mind is, why? What then is the next step worse than doomsday? As forecast here two weeks ago, evidence now of the possibility that something called an underground blowout might be happening. Oil seeping outside BP's damaged well through the ocean floor. That new information coming from Senator Bill Nelson of Florida referencing fears he addressed in a letter to BP. Andrea, we're looking into something new right now, that there's reports of oil that's seeping up from the seabed, which would indicate, if that's true, that the well casing itself is actually pierced underneath the seabed. Well, the, the, the real doomsday scenario here, Keith, is if that casing gives up 
and, and it does come through the other strings of pipe, because remember, it's concentric pipe mm -hmm. that holds this well together. If it comes into the formation, basically you've got uncontrolled flow to the seafloor, and that is the doomsday scenario. There's nothing they can do except the relief well, and it could likely flow for some time until they get it killed. Um, following up on the issue of, uh, of your saying over the weekend that it would take the cleanup could take months, I've talked to environmental groups this morning who say that that's a pipe dream. They believe that based on the Exxon Valdez situation, it's going to be a minimum of three, four, five years, maybe much more than that, that this cleanup operation is going to be going on in a major way. Do you simply yeah. disagree with that? No, no, I don't. I, maybe it's how we're characterizing it. Uh, the, uh, the dealing with the, the oil spill on the surface. It's going to go on for a couple of months. After that, it'll be taken care of. I agree with you. Long-term issues of restoring the environment and the habitats and stuff will be a, will be years. You were here. The uh, the oil from the we're tired of the bailouts, and we are tired of being dumped on in the Gulf. I'm a commercial fisherman uh, from the Gulf of Mexico, and we're tired of being dumped on. Let me ask the protesters to please. Uh, Exit the room or allow us to proceed with our hearing. Come on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Lynn Hudgens. Uh, I'm a charter fisherman here on Grand Isle. Uh, you know, we don't know what we're going to do. But uh, the oil's everywhere, you know, and each day it gets worse. It's not getting better. You know, I've spent my whole life doing something with water. You know, I, I dove with your grandfather on the Calypso in the summer years ago. And, uh, you know, I can only imagine what he'd say. He'd get probably sick looking at this, you know. It's, it's uh, I don't even know what words can you, you can't even describe it. You know, it's like something you see and you love. I, I, it's, it's like losing a loved one. You know, that's, this is, uh, this is something we love, you know. I moved 1,200 miles to come to an island in the middle of nowhere because it was so beautiful and the fishing was great and the people were wonderful. And now everybody's stressed out, you know. Uh, this, is, this is fundamentally going to change this island and southern Louisiana. How? We don't know. But it's out of our control. ...who studies coral reefs went along. When we first got in the water and we passed through that first 30 feet, um, what I noticed was a murky haze on the water that's usually not there. Now, we'll have freshwater mixing that'll give us a haze, but this was like a chemical solution haze. Both men noted there were virtually no fish for the first 30 feet of the dive, and that is strange. Once we dropped out of that murk, there was life, abundant life. Still, all was not well, according to Walker. At 60 feet below the surface, we found these strange floating strands of what seems to be dispersed oil. Something I've never seen in diving in my whole life out here. These big snot balls. No, I never saw it in my life, ever. It's not just a, a normal algae bloom or something that gives out. Oh, no. There's nothing natural about what we dove in today. We've been out surfing the last two or three days around here, and it, we just haven't seen it yet. So we can smell it. stinks bad, so, uh, but we're not seeing it in the water. Of all the states affected by the spill so far, Florida has the most to lose. Tourism is its largest industry, employing nearly a million people. Many tourists who come to Pensacola Beach come to surf, and often they rent surfboards, or at least they did before the tarball showed up. Nancy Spencer is the owner of Inner Light Surf Shop in Gulf Breeze, Florida, the neighboring town to Pensacola Beach. Oh, it's already affected our business. Um, we own, you know, like r rental places too, and we've had people canceling their week here and. And then surfboard sales to uh, like summer surfers, that's what we call people that don't really surf year-round, that surf when the weather gets nice, those sales have dropped off almost instantly. Florida tourism authorities are rolling out an aggressive advertising campaign, partially funded by BP, aimed at stressing that the state's beaches remain open for business, despite the pollution threat. And I have to read this. The oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico may have apocalyptic consequences. A report of the Russian Ministry of Natural Resources said the British petroleum oil spill is threatening the entire eastern half of North American continent with total destruction. No, no, that's, uh, that, that's, that is the point. The point is that we're going to see one catastrophe after another, whether it's man-made natural disaster, 
financial, environmental, it's all collapsed. I'll be honest with you, I hate to be a, I mean, kind of like this is a huge disaster that, that the extent of this is so much further than what we're, than what we're being told.